Okay, guys. Uh, Crypto Mike here with the mic check. One, two, one, two. Is this thing on? Uh, we just had Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey and Kathy Woods uh, in a live conference at uh, ARK Invest's uh, annual Bitcoin conference called the B Word. And so um, it was interesting. It was very interesting. The price rose um, sharply. The price rose sharply over the last 24 hours and uh i've been expecting that i've been expecting that because of this conference and because of people's antip anticipation of possible announcements or just you know whatever the hell elon musk might say about bitcoin that's bullish and pretty much the overall sentiment was about 90 percent bullish the only people who didn't really have the only person who had things that he would change a little or just you know he would like to see improved a little bit was elon musk and that was about only 10 percent of his sentiment was a little negative but they discussed ways of uh, being more green uh topics of discussion included uh, elon musk basically came out as saying that he owns bitcoin Tesla owns Bitcoin, and uh, Tesla doesn't own, but Elon Musk owns Ethereum and Dogecoin, and he kept repeating those those three. So Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Um, so that was uh, an early topic of discussion. We'll kind of go over that, and so I'm going to just do a little commentary over this uh, conference, which ended up being about an hour long. This this live uh, sec section of it. And so, uh, other topics included, uh, one, one of the interesting ones was Elon being asked about mining, uh, Bitcoin on, from Starlink on a Starlink, like putting a node up on Starlink. And he actually, Elon Musk said he has already actually ran it by his crew, uh, which is very interesting. He said he's already run it by his crew and he was going to, um, think about putting uh bitcoin ethereum and dogecoin mining up in the sky in starlink on starlink so um in my opinion that's extremely bullish um with th this whole conversation was extremely bullish i'm gonna go ahead and play it for you and then i'll, I'll add a little bit of commentary here and there now the price did go up and it's kind of dumped a little which is you know you, you can't go up for too long without you know the fibs getting knocked down and people you know there's going to be shorts and longs and whatever. It's going to come down. I, I, I still believe there's a possible week or two of either sideways or downtrend. It's not, it doesn't mean it's probable, but I think it's possible. I would love to see it go up from here, though. And I was expecting it to go up on this date today january uh, july 21st because of this bitcoin conference now we, ha we also have a lot of other stuff going on um throughout this month so i think things are starting to look a little bit more green all right we'll go ahead and start playing this here special guests the first is kathy wood founder ceo and cio of arc invest next is elon musk Techno King of Tesla and Chief Engineer of SpaceX. <laughs> and finally, uh, Jack Dorsey, CEO of Square and CEO of Twitter. A lot to talk about today. So let's get to the talk and get right to it. Um, I'm going to start off by asking each of you uh, a question, uh, which is what, um, what's shaped and influenced your views on Bitcoin? And let's start with Kathy. Okay, Steve, thank you. Uh, well, the first thing was uh, our focus on disruptive innovation. Uh, so starting in 2011, Brett Winton, our director of research, who I know will be on the program later, um, he started talking about this thing called crypto, well, Bitcoin at the time. And it was a curiosity as we were doing our brainstorms in, in research, but as we learned more about this open source ecosystem, uh, that might fulfill the role of the, the payment system that the internet neglected to build 
into the system, not expecting commerce, we thought, hmm, this might be something. And then I became even more interested when I realized uh, that there, that that my economics would come into play as well here. And uh, Art Laffer, um, my mentor uh, from from USC. Uh, and a monetary scholar, uh, in 2014, I asked him if he would collaborate on a paper on on Bitcoin. Uh, and he, he was a bit of a naysayer at first, and uh, but agreed to read the paper. He read the paper, tore it up, uh, and, and, and from an economics point of view, really wanted to understand this. And he said, you know, I think you got something here. This is a rules-based monetary system. I've been waiting for this for my entire career. So the combination of disruptive innovation generally, economics on top of that, and the huge misunderstanding out there as to what this is, uh, that was that was intriguing and, and launched our research effort. Thank you. Elon, uh, what's influenced your views on Bitcoin? Well, I've... Uh, real quick, so I, real quick, I would like to add that I've been investing in the stock market a little bit, diversifying a little bit from cryptocurrency. And the three stocks, funny, funny enough, three stocks I've been investing in are Coinbase, Coin, Square, SQ, and Kathy Wood's Arc X, which is her space exploration uh, sector of Arc Investments, and. Um, I would highly recommend checking each of those out. I thought about money for quite a while, obviously since the PayPal days, um, the uh, uh, and then the, the companies that preceded that X.com, which I created, and and uh, Confinity, which uh, Peter Thiel, Max Levchin, uh, Luke Howery, and others created. Um, and we combined the companies and made PayPal. Made PayPal. So I've been thinking about money for a long time. Um, and really, it's it, it, it's best to think of money as an information system, uh, primarily an information system for labor allocation. Um, and uh, for practical purposes, it exists in a series of uh, heterogeneous databases, like very different databases in uh, bank mainframes around the world. Uh, it uh, moves quite slowly in reality. It may seem to move fast sometimes, and it does with PayPal, which is real time. But uh, the vast majority of the systems out there are batch processing. So the actual uh, reconciliation may take uh, one to five uh, business days, uh, so sometimes longer. Um, and the, the, you have the ACH system, which is ancient and still still in operation, which is um, allows transfers uh, effectively like a, a check would be an ACH tra transfer, but it's, it's not secure. And you've got the uh, credit card systems, which are also uh, not secure. It would be like handing your username and password to a stranger in a restaurant if, if, if you buy a meal. So um, there's, there's definitely an opportunity for uh, something that is, uh, that is better from an inf information theory standpoint. So, um, and, 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 and there you can think of it like data, data on a network, I think, is, is the way to view it. Um, what has the, the most throughput? What has uh, the, the least error? Uh, lost, what, what drops the fewest packets? Uh, fraud, fraud, for example, being a source of error. Um, and uh, government interference in currencies being a source of error. Um, but it's, it's fundamentally an information system, so um, I think it makes sense to support something that uh, improves the, 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 the quality of information with which we conduct the economy. Um, and you know, Bitcoin is uh, a candidate for that. Uh, it, is, it does, I think, some things well, um, and it's obviously it's, it's evolving, and there are additional things like Lightning being done on top of Bitcoin. Um, but, but Bitcoin per se is mostly solving for uh, scarcity, um, or, or rather, solving for uh, essentially um, having no throat to choke, decentralized. Uh, so there's there's no one who can be uh, coerced in any way uh, to uh, empty that Bitcoin account. Well, I guess they could technically, but on an individual basis, but the system as a whole cannot. Um, and um, and it has an open ledger, uh, which is also quite quite good. Um, but transaction volume is is low. Uh, transaction transaction cost is high, uh, and usability for the average person is is not is not yet very good. But it has a lot of potential. 
Um, and I should say that, like, I, I'm not, and I apologize for taking a long time, but this, there certainly is lots to say. Um, in general, I'm a supporter of, of Bitcoin um, and uh, the idea of cryptocurrency in general. Um, uh, but as I've said publicly, we, we need to watch, to watch out for uh, crypto taking, uh, especially Bitcoin, using proof of work to maybe use energy that's maybe a bit too much uh, and, and not necessarily uh, good for the environment. So, um, but on balance, I support Bitcoin, and I, I and I, I'm not an investor. I don't, the only publicly traded stock I own is Tesla, um, and the only significant thing I own outside of Tesla is is, is my SpaceX stock that that, that um, you know help create both companies. So, um, but out, but apart from that, uh, I do own Bitcoin, uh, and, and Tesla owns, owns Bitcoin, SpaceX owns Bitcoin. Um, and I do personally uh, own a bit of Ethereum and, and Dogecoin, of course. So. Okay, great. Thank you. And we'll get into some of those issues in, in, in more depth. So there you have it. That, that was the first mention. Um, I'm sure he's mentioned Ethereum in the past before. But this is, like I've said like before, uh, you know, like we're going to transition into more of a... Uh, Bitcoin will be the store of value, but Ethereum is going to be a monster, a giant. I'm telling you guys, there's so much activity going on. If you even just immerse yourself into that Ethereum world, just for like, just into the ether, right? Just, if you just immerse yourself into the ether for just a month and just a few different projects who are building smart contract protocols that are literally changing the way we see finance um and and DeFi is going to be the next wave you know that's going to be now this is going to lead the way elon musk endorsing ethereum as saying he owns some so obviously he, be he believes in it and a little later he t he'll tell you he says i believe in pumping but i do not dump he says that he says he wants people to get in he wants to give power to the people so you know take with that like take take that as as you will um, I, I've bought, I've always been inc inclined to believe him. However, there are always diff like incentives in the background with t people like who have power, like all these people here that they will say certain things, you know? Um, but I do believe him. I do believe there is, um, something beneficial coming from, uh, pe people like, like Elon Musk and his, you know, all this new stuff technology and stuff like we do need to embrace the future all right so we do need to pay attention to what he says and just wait till he says what he says about dogecoin you know it's, it's just ridiculous but um let's go forward as well um jack how about you what shaped your views of Bitcoin? um the the network and the community i you know it's uh it's deeply principled it's weird as hell uh, it's always evolving and it just reminded me of the internet when I was a kid and you know I, I encountered alt cypherpunks when I was fairly young and um, this was a topic of discussion for years I didn't touch it until 2008 when we started Square um, you know we Elon and teams at X and PayPal inspired a lot of what we were trying to do trying to bring in more to a physical world but we encountered this crazy predatory system um, that was slow, that was obtuse. And I think, you know, one of the things that we tried to do, which X and PayPal also tried to do, is build an abstraction layer around this complication and around this predatory nature that the financial industry can tend to be and make it work for people. But when I saw Bitcoin in 2009, you see a chance to replace the whole foundation. And everything that Elon was talking about in terms of ACH and um, the credit card networks were built with very different agendas in a very different time frame. And it's crazy that they still exist and yeah. they have scaled, but they, they, they just are not relevant to today. And they're certainly not relevant to the future, especially when you consider the entire world and countries like Nigeria or Ghana or India. And it's interconnection with countries like the United States and Canada and all over Europe. So what 
what really drove my thinking and drives my passion around it is like if the internet gets a chance to get a native currency um what will that be and, and to me it's bitcoin because of those principles because of that creation story because of its resilience uh, because of the number of tests it's been but what what inspires me the most is just the community driving it it's it just reminds me of the early internet it's it's the only reason that i have a career because i learned so much from people like who are building bitcoin today and i continue to learn uh, in that sense and um, i'm so grateful for it so that's a good segue into the next question i'd like to ask you jack is you you said before the bitcoin changes everything can you speak more to that well i just I just think that, um, you know, our, a lot of what we experience in life, um, when you really get down to the, to the foundation, a lot of our monetary policies, a lot of our monetary systems cause so much distraction and so much cost. And when you get to a system where you have the potential for people to truly own it, um, they can verify it themselves. You don't have to have trust going in. Uh, you don't have to trust it at all. You can verify it. Uh, through source code or whatever your um, your appetite is, and that any particular person can help drive uh, the future of it, and at the same time, it's not controlled by any state, it's not controlled by any bank, it's not controlled by any corporation, um, and these three parties of people who participate in the network, people who mine, and also the developers, constantly debating. Uh, the correct roadmap and the way forward is a beautiful thing. And I don't know of many other consensus-based models that have existed at that scale for this long with this amount of success. And we're still fairly early. So when, you know, I, I met a woman in Ethiopia uh, two years ago, and she was trying to create the lift for, for Ethiopia. Elon, I think I reached out to you at that time as well because she really wanted some Teslas. Um, she still has to take paper fiat cash from her passengers and pay all of her drivers in the same way because there's no monetary system that she can utilize. There's nothing digital. Um, and Africa as a continent is hugely interconnected from a monetary standpoint, but also hugely taxed in that same way. Um, so a lot of the potential that I, I see, you know, the internet having a, a native currency um, helps her build her business. Uh, in a much faster way. And also, if you consider something like Bitcoin existing before um, YouTube, before Twitter, before Facebook, a lot of the business models that we have today would not be the same. We would not, we would certainly not have the dependency we have upon the advertising business model if Bitcoin existed pre Twitter. And I think the amount of um, business models that it enables, the amount of innovation it enables going forward especially when you can consider the whole internet instead of going country by country by country by country, which you have to whenever you're doing with finance, um, it, it really just opens the aperture. And that, that, is, that is what I want to see in my lifetime, is, is a currency that is standard and sound for the internet that everyone can use. Great. Um, a hallmark of Bitcoin Okay, now you're gonna you're gonna hear um, things, little little here like bits and pieces here, where if you are a Flexa or AMP investor, if you ha if you know anything about Flexa, you're gonna you're gonna hear like if you researched it or it, like the way it's gonna be able to make money accessible to everyone and tradable into any currency from any currency. Um, it's just like just like XRP, but it's it's DeFi. It's 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 like for the people, you know. It's not for the banks. All right. So just listen to the words and see if any of the words they say make you think about Flexa. I mean, is its fixed supply of 21 million coins? Um, Elon referenced that earlier. It may be the first system that humans have created that humans cannot later change. Kathy, I'm curious, with your background in monetary history and macroeconomics, what, what are your thoughts on that, that type of system? 
Oh well, I'll just uh, I'll recount the 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 story uh, about Art Laffer and and our going through the paper, uh, and he said, uh, as I said, first rules based monetary system, global ever. This is a a very big idea. Once we had convinced him of the um, of the ecosystem it, itself. Uh, now, this is uh, the role that it's playing, given that the rule is a quantity rule, that 21 million units, is really a, a store of value uh, role. So there are three roles of money, uh, store of value, very important, uh, 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 the uh, means of exchange, so for transactions, and the unit of account. Uh, so. Uh, every good priced in terms of, uh, of whatever the unit is. Uh, so store of value is um, its primary use right now. Um, the others uh, exist with unit of account, reserve currency of the crypto asset ecosystem. That's being seeded a little bit towards uh, uh, stable coins right now. Uh, but the store of value is a, a, a very big role and means of exchange with apps built on top of uh, the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, we think is going to become more more of a reality. Right now, high value, uh, high value transactions take place over over Bitcoin. Uh, and uh, and that is a very useful role. So we look at those and I remember saying to Art, how big could this be? And he said, well, how big is the U.S. monetary base? Well, today it's eight trillion dollars, eight trillion dollars. At the time we were talking, it was four trillion. Uh, so we've gone through another crisis since then. Um, and so the store of value, this idea that purchasing power will go up over time uh, uh, if demand rises relative to supply, supply ultimately fixed at 21 million units. Um, that's that's a very good thing. Purchasing power going up globally around the world. Uh, and this idea that it's a hedge against uh, confiscation of wealth uh, and that can take place in, in a myriad uh, of ways. Uh, but uh, inflation and especially hyperinflation in emerging markets is the primary way. Talk about uh, dis destroying purchasing power. Uh, so that's a very big, uh, very big idea. And I'll also mention uh, deflation. In some ways, it's a hedge against deflation. I know some people are confused that um, we uh, at ARC think that we're in a deflationary environment here in the United States. If that is true, the odds of a hyperinflation in the rest of the world, especially in emerging markets, uh, is also true. So, but this deflation, and we learned from 0809, there's counterparty risk associated with deflation. And I think Bitcoin uh, would be a hedge against that uh, uh, eventuality as well. So it's a very big idea. Right. I suspect among us, there's not a lot of debate about Bitcoin's potential as a store of value. But Jack, you referenced earlier um, it being or, or becoming the native currency of the internet. Can you speak more to that? And, and also how it relates to maybe how uh, institutions think about it? Um, <clears throat> okay, be um, before he talks, before he answers, uh, before he answers, I, I wanted to, I, I should have said it at the beginning, um, but uh, just let me, if, if you don't know who these people are, or what companies they're involved with, Kathy Wood is, um, she is the CEO of ARK Invest, which is a company that is an investment fund, uh, like, and so they, she picks and chooses different emerging technologies, invests in them, and then she has people who buy into her uh, fund. So, and then Elon Musk, of course, he's the CEO uh, uh, of Tesla, the CEO of SpaceX, the Boring Company, which bores tunnels to to create um, alleys or just uh, ways for cars to pass under underneath the uh, surface. Um, and what else? He 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 was the one of the uh, owners and creators of paypal uh, along with peter thiel um and he's, in, he's been involved with a few other companies but those are the 
the main ones. And he's also been the one who's basically single-handedly pumped Doge to the moon. And he probably will continue to do so because he owns Doge and he, you know, he's probably going to end up selling it for Bitcoin. Um, so, And then there's Jack Dorsey who created Twitter. That's his claim to fame. And then after that, he created Square, which is a payments company. Um, and it's going to be now. And then it also has the cash app. And there's also a, another um, leg of it called Square Crypto. Now, there are rumors that they are creating their own cryptocurrency and it, it there it's one that i did a couple of videos on years ago called xenon so to keep that one in mind because they are involved with satellites and um uh, and stuff like that so it'll it, it would be kind of similar to there might be connection there to starlink with elon musk oh and starlink is another one elon musk is doing um which is a really really awesome internet satellite company um to where you just pay five hundred dollars to install the equipment and it's very easy easy to install and you pay 99 dollars a month and i'm paying 99 dollars a month we're we're, all, we're paying 99 dollars a month here for spectrum and starlink is like four times faster than that so it's basically you're paying the same price but it's like four times faster and it's a lot more accessible you know because it's in the it's in the air you know it's in the cloud so um that's a little background and this other guy here is the moderator i i honestly forgot his name um he's a good moderator though but he also i think he believe i i believe he works for arc uh invest all right yeah i mean like um just, just simple example if uh, i happen to be in ghana and my family's in nigeria uh currently i can take anywhere from uh and I need to send money back I, anywhere from uh, 10 to 30 percent off the top just to send that money back. Whereas um, if you just focus on the worldwide remittance problem, um, Bitcoin solves so many, so many of those problems today instantly uh, without having to go through any intermediaries or any slowness or complicated systems that a corporation or, or a state uh, created. So I think, um, you know, having having sound money with that is separate from the state is the idea. Uh, having it completely verifiable by everyone, including the state, including corporations, including individuals, including developers who want to build on top of it, is quite powerful and that's what keeps it secure and strong. And um, I think that... Um, not necessarily intentional, uh, but we have the chip shortage, that's real, and um, we have the shift towards... ...be the monetary system for the world at... But with a second layer, this is possible depending upon how that, that second layer is implemented. Um, and uh, yeah, that's part of why I think there's, there's, there, there may be some merit um, to uh, <laughs> something that may seem silly like like, Ethereum, like, like Dogecoin. Um, I, I think Ethereum also, might, like, so might, like the, three, the three things I, I own outside of SpaceX and Tesla, uh, and also obviously it's a Neuralink and Boring Company, but but of any significance are um, Bitcoin by far, and then some Ethereum and some Doge. Um, so, you know. If All right, and, and so this conference was today. So it was just an hour ago. Um, and you can bet your ass all the news media sites involving crypto that ever report on crypto are going to be talking about Elon Musk endorsing Ethereum. And, and people will ask him more and more questions. So from this point on, Ethereum is like looking very, very bullish because we already knew about Dogecoin. We already knew about Bitcoin, but he's he just started mentioning Ethereum here. And I've been saying this for years. He's been hinting about Ethereum for years now through his tweets, okay? And if you have been listening to me or, you know, then you know what I've been, what I'm talking about, all right? The price of Bitcoin goes goes down I I, uh, I lose money I, I'm not sort of you know um, you know I might pump but I don't dump <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so uh, you know it, it's not a case of um, I, I definitely do not believe in, <laughs> in getting the price high and selling or anything like that um, so uh, and I would like to see what coin okay fine and I'll, I'll tell you one more thing too the goal of the new elite this is the new elite elon musk and there's a lot of a lot of people 
behind the new elite. Um, the new elite is going to drive like they have they have a way they're going to figure out and they're doing it right now Elon's the first person um they're driving people into crypto they're going to eventually drive okay the elite and the new elite they have the same plan to drive everyone into crypto now the old elite you know the the old dinosaurs that used to be um basically in charge of the system they're they're really losing a lot of control. So now people like Elon is like the people's man and what you know he's like. So he, they're they're not like they're not angels that's for sure. But the new elite wants to drive people into crypto in a more humane way. Okay, and this is from inside sources that are, you know that I know. Um, so they're doing that. They're pumping it. They're getting Elon Musk. He's getting people into crypto. They're getting people into crypto, and some people are losing their money. Yeah, sure, but they're not. Those are the ones who are selling. So what Elon is saying, he's pumping. What he's saying is he's he's getting people into crypto, and he's not selling. It's not gonna keep. Go it's not gonna go down. It's gonna keep going up. Yeah, there's gonna be sideways. There's gonna be a little down dips, but that's normal. But the the overall trend is that crypto is gonna go up and up and up. And I don't think Bitcoin's gonna go away. Um, at this point, it just can't. Um, Despite what some people think, I really don't think Bitcoin's going away. Ethereum's definitely not going away. I mean, Ethereum might even surpass Bitcoin. We'll see. It's tough to tell at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, so what they're doing is driving people into crypto slowly but surely. And this is the best time to buy. Best time. It might be down for another week. It might not be. I don't know. It might go up from here because now we're going to get. This is basically a confirmation of the resumation of the bull market. Okay, this this whole conversation here. So listen closely to what mostly what Elon Musk says, but Kathy Wood and Jack Dorsey as well. Can succeed. Um, uh, I think there's there's some merit to this is not a slam on Bitcoin. There's some merit to, to consider considering uh, a, a something that has. Uh, higher max transaction rate um, and lower transaction cost um, and kind of seeing how far you could take a single layer network where the uh, exchanges act as a de facto uh, second layer. Um, I think you can probably take that further than people realize and, and as uh, bandwidth increases over time, uh, latency decreases, uh, I mean, uh, SpaceX and Starlink is actually playing a role in this. Um, and I think long term people will probably have you know, access to uh, worldwide access to gigabit level uh, connectivity at low latency, and so uh, at, at at low cost. And so then, you know, your your, your base layer could do a lot of transactions if you uh, take that into account. Um, so, yeah, but but like I said, Bitcoin with a layer two system, um, so they could scale to do a vast number of transactions. Uh, same goes for Ethereum. Question about the um, <clears throat> scaling at the layer one. The the concern from you know the past five years of debate in the Bitcoin community is that that would sacrifice too much uh, decentralization and hurt the hurt the censorship resistant properties of Bitcoin. Um, I'm curious if, if you know what are your thoughts on that? Are, are you sensitive to that? Do you, and are you concerned about losing some of the special properties of Bitcoin or, or, or another cryptocurrency by scaling at layer one. Yeah, I mean, th these things are it's helpful to like use the physics tools of thinking and say, you know, scale up, scale down and see if it still makes sense. So if scaling up the transaction block doesn't make sense, why don't you scale it down? And have it be, you know, so that somebody, you know, with a <laughs> laptop from 2008 can still run a Bitcoin node. Why not slow it down? Oh, you want to slow it down? Well, maybe you have, maybe you're at the wrong number then. <laughs> there's, there's actually people, there's members in the community that do do want to slow it down. <laughs> but I, but I understand no, you. It's, it's silly. Um, the 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 reality is like the average person is not going to run um, a Bitcoin node. So this is this is a and 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 Bitcoin, you know, uh, it was a lot of clever ideas, but. Uh, you know, th th these parameters were set, I don't know, what, in 2008 or something? 
uh, maybe 2009. Um, and there's like there been some improvements uh, since then, but but not a lot. So, um, you know, it's sort of like if, if, if the, the there was still at, in 2008 there was still a, a non-trivial number of people on modems. <laughs> so, um, you know, now now it is it is uh, quite common to get uh, uh, 100 megabit uh, connection just for a house. Some some houses have gigabit connections. So, um, and that, that trend is obviously in the direction of higher bandwidth and lower latency. Um, and if somebody else doesn't do it, Starlink certainly will. So I have high confidence that uh, you will be able to maintain a decentralized finance system while still having a much bigger blockchain, AKA tech, ASCII text, text ledger, um, <laughs> a hash ledger. Um, you can make the hash ledger bigger um, without uh, suffering from decentralization as uh, the average connectivity improves, obviously. What idea would be to run of, or to put a Bitcoin full node in, in Starlink ter terminals? That way more people would be, be running. I uh, actually, <laughs> I have. <clears throat> okay, now listen, listen closely to what he says here. What he just, what he's, what he's about to say is very, very bullish for Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin, all right? And probably other ones that, you know, that you can mine too. So uh, listen to what he says. I run this by the team at one point. Um, I had this idea, which is kind of off the wall, but uh, like, let's say you need a, a, a little space heater. Um, and normally your space heater would uh, just be pure entropy. Um, but what if that space heater was also a, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge mining node? Uh, pick, pick your currency. Um, and so then you'd be heated up and uh, you would also mine, uh, uh, you know, your, your currency.